it's the target for trying to fix obesity because you need certain fats and you don't need other fats. And when you basically go fat free, which we all did for 50 years, okay, we actually got sicker because we actually needed the fats. And what we did was we loaded up on the carbohydrate. Remember all the pasta bars from the 1980s, you know, as everybody tried to go fat free, okay? that was the worst thing that we could have ever done because all it, what we did was we took something that was actually good for us in our diet and substitute something that was bad for us in our diet. Another mm -hmm. example, which I love is, you know, as a pediatrician, chocolate milk, you know, they took the fat out of the milk and then the kids wouldn't drink it because it tasted like dishwater. And what they do, they added the chocolate, right? They took the fat out, which was good. And they put in instead the sugar, which was bad. Mm -hmm. And because this has nothing to do with calories. And so I, that is my mantra, kill the calorie, you know, hashtag kill the calorie. And we have shown 50 ways from Sunday, why obesity is not about calories. Mm -hmm. So you've told us about a carbohydrate uh, obesogen. That was the, the whole fructose discussion. We talked about how fructose affects the body differently than glucose. Right. And because it's processed differently and there it's, it's because of the way it's processed, it's more obesogenic. Um, are there any obesogenic fats? And what I'm thinking of here, based on what you just said and some other things that, that I've discussed on the podcast recently, there's two types of fats I would like to get your take on. So one are the, um, basically the seed oils, the omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids right. and the extent to which they're obesogenic. And right. then maybe after that, I want to ask you about, you know, you were just talking about milk and other things, saturated fat. Because we've, I've been told my whole life that saturated fat is, is the really problematic one that will drive cardiovascular disease and and other bad things. Right. So let's start with the omega sixes. Okay. And I do believe you had uh, Chris Kanabi on your show already. Yes. He's a, a, you know, major proponent of getting rid of omega sixes. And I love Chris. You know, great guy. Um, I'm not sure that omega sixes are obesogenic specifically. However, they are pro-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And when you are pro-inflammatory, you generate insulin resistance. And if you generate insulin resistance, then that is obesogenic. So in that respect, they may be obesogenic indirectly as opposed to directly mm -hmm. because they are pro-inflammatory. Now, omega-6s, you need them it's not like you can do without them. If you didn't have any omega-6s, you would be eaten by the maggots, all right? They are part of your defense system against foreign invaders. And the reason is because omega-6 fatty acids, which are in seed oils, you know, um, canola oil, uh, 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 soybean oil is famous for it, you know, et cetera. Okay. Um, they are the precursors to arachidonic acid. Mm -hmm. Arachidonic acid is the precursor to virtually all of the pro-inflammatory cytokines, thromboxanes, eicosanoids, uh, 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 missing one, thromboxane. Prostaglandins. Prostaglandins, prostaglandins, right, sorry. Um, so you need them, but you don't need too many of them. Mm -hmm. And it is estimated that what we need is an omega-6 to omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. Omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of about one to one would be optimal, but you can only really achieve that if you live on a coast. Mm -hmm. And or th you know, three to one, four to one, maybe tops. Our current omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is 20 to 25 to one based on how many processed foods you eat. Mm -hmm. And when that little uh, that little comment you made about living near the coast, was that uh, alluding to seafood? Yeah, basically seafood has omega-3s. And the reason is not because the seafood makes omega-3s. The seafood eats the omega-3s. The omega-3s are made by algae. Algae make omega-3s. The fish eat the algae, we eat the fish. So we get our omega-3s third hand and they are anti-inflammatory. We're talking about three omega-3s, ALA, uh, 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 alpha, alpha, uh, linolenic acid, ALA, and that you can find in vegetables, but alpha linolenic acid, ALA, has been shown to have cardiovascular protection, but not 
neural protection. It doesn't get mm -hmm. to the brain. The next one is EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid. That gets to the brain and that improves neural transmission and it is absolutely essential for brain health. The problem is that EPA is the one that smells fishy. Mm. So it's not in a lot of processed foods. <laughs> and then fresh, finally, so fresh EPA smells fishy. It's not just oxidized EPA. Yeah, well, more uh, oxidized EPA will smell fishier. Got it. Without a question. I mean, there's a little bit of a smell, but not, not nearly as much. But, mm -hmm. And then finally, the last one is DHA, docohexaenoic acid. <laughs> DHA is necessary for neuronal structure. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is that ALA does not really get converted to EPA or DHA. The percent conversion of that in the body is extremely low, mm -hmm. like less than 1%. So if you tried to get all of your omega-3s through a purely plant-based diet, would that be problematic for that reason? Yes. Yes. And so people who are on plant-based diets really do need to take some form of omega-3 supplementation because ALA alone is not enough. 